Today we continue to speak about Python. You started uh, last time with Dario, uh, with the basics, principle, and fundamentals of Python. You stop uh, here. So from here we'll start. Uh, this is basic principle, basic fundamentals of Python. So we cover almost uh, all, we can say, uh, what we need, what we think is uh, important, is fundamental for this course. After this slide, next lectures, we will uh, uh, continue speaking about Python and uh, trying to do something with Python in a more uh, practice way. So by example, by exercises. So this is more classical lecture, lecture and then we move uh, on um, more practical exercise and uh, programming by example, learning by example. So we we'll start uh, from strings. Strings in Python are defined by using quotes, double quotes or single quotes are almost identical and different to use one or the other. Strings are immutable. So when, define, uh, you, when you define a string, you cannot modify the string anymore. If you want another version of the string, you want to modify the string, you have to copy the string in another string, and then in, during the copy, you can perform some operation. A string is a, a sequence of characters, so each character in a string is assigned by a number, this is an index. So the first character of a string is the, at the index zero, the second in the index one, and so on. Mathematical operator cannot be applied except the plus and the uh, asterisk operator, that the plus means concatenation, print my plus name, prints my name, while print one multiply three, Prints one one one. Okay. More string. This is a, a long example. We can try to read together. So in the first part, the example define some variables. Okay, and it's not my name, but uh, it's Dario names. It is Dario Bonino. His age is uh, thirty six. Centimeter, uh, not a lie, okay. His uh, height is uh, 180, his weight is uh, et cetera. His eyes are blue, his teeth are more or less white, his hair are brown. So a list of variable with some string inside, name, blue, brown, and some number, integer number. My age, my white. After we have, um, a list of print, what we want to print on the screen. So the first line is, let's talk about percent %s. Percent %s is a placeholder that is replaced from the content of my name. My name is Dario Bonino, so let's talk about Dario Bonino will be the output. Why percent %s? Because this is a string. So this percent %s expect a string. Next line, he is percent %d centimeter tall, and the variable is my height. So the output of this string is he is 180 centimeter tall. This percent %d stands for integer number. Similar next line for the weight, and then we have a, uh, another line that is only text, actually is not too heavy. This line, he's got the percent %s size and percent %s air, present a difference respect to the before. The difference is that we have two placeholder and consequently two variables to replace this placeholder. These two variables in this format are named 
a parenthesis, then an object, a comma, another object, eventually, optionally another comma, and so on, is named in Python tuple. These are variables, simple variables, this is a tuple. Why we have a tuple? Because this instruction do not support multiple percent variable. We cannot write percent my eyes, comma, percent my hair. We need to write percent one thing. So the first percent s is replaced by the first variable in the tuple. The second percent s is replaced by the second variable in the tuple. Next line is similar for his state are usually white depending on the coffee. While the last line is a little bit tricky in the sense that it presents a longer type tuple where we have, if I add percent %d, it's my age, the first value. The second percent %d is the second value. The third percent %d is the third value. And finally, the last percent %d is an operation, a sum of three different values. So Python compute this uh, operation and replace the result in this line. So finally, we have, if I add 36, 180, and 73, I get 289. OK? So percent %s, percent %d, I call it the placeholder. The right name is specifier. Percent %s is for formatting, formatting string. Percent %d is for formatting integer numbers. There are other, for example, percent %r that uh, show a raw representation of an object. We we'll see an example uh, right now. Then, for example, we have a percent %f that is for floating point number. But the object is the same. Yeah, they are there as a placeholder for format something. Other example. We define a variable that we name uh, x. All these uh, examples in this set of slides are already available on the course website. So if you want to download, uh, also next time, uh, they are a set of different Python files. So the first line is x equal. There are percent %d type of people. This percent %d is, uh, this time, a number. A teen, we can say. Then we define the binary variable and we put it the string binary. The do not variable and we put inside of it the string don't. And then another variable, a string with two specifier that takes binary and do not as argument. So. This line will read those who know binary and those who don't. Then the program print x. Let's see here. There are one zero type of people. Then it prints the other line. Those who know binary and those who don't. Then print. I said the percent r. R is the raw representation. And for R, we pass the string X. We see that the string X, the first time we print as a string, it prints R. There are one zero type of people without quotes. In this, in this time, in, I said percent R. The sentence is here, but there are a quotes behind because this is the raw representation of a string. <coughs> then it prints, I also said single quote, percent %s, close single quote with the other sentence, and the output is similar to the one before. After it defines other two variables, hilarious false, it's a Boolean variable, and the joke evaluation, 
that is a string with a percent error specified percent error inside, but without, in this moment, an argument. This time, print joke evaluation, that is, isn't that joke so funny? And this percent R is replaced by the content of Hilarious. So, isn't that joke so funny? False. Finally, demonstrate the concatenation of strings, where define other two string, W, this is the left side of, and E, a string with a right side, and print, this is the left side of a string with a right side. A lot of print and variables. Important for string are escape sequences. Escape sequences are needed for representing and printing all those um, uh, characters that are reserved for the system. For example, the slash n is the line feed and carriage return, new line. This double slash prints a single slash. If we want to print uh, hello with uh, a double comma, sorry, a double quote before and after, and with digit print, I say the hello in this way, we have a syntax error. Because according to the print, here start the string, and here stop the string, finish the string. And then here start another string, and this hello inside is, uh, he done, it doesn't know what is. Solution is, for example, to print this line is using escape sequences. So these two quotes quote are escaped by adding a, a slash. Let's see one moment. Trust me, but uh, verify is better. Um, print, I said, hello world. Invalid syntax, as expected. If I put an escape here, it correctly print, I said the word. Another way to avoid this problem is to use, to alternate single quote and double quote. So if I put a single quote here, instead of a double quote, the result, the string is printed without errors. Okay. Next topic, getting input from people. We proceed, uh, for example, by example, for most of time. So we want to ask the user age and the user eight. How we can do this? By using the raw input function. The raw input function allows to read from the console, from the command line. For example, print, how old are you? Age row equal row input. This row input wait for the input from the user, from the console, and then store the result in this age variable. Same happens from print auto how tall are you, that expect a value from our input and memorize in height. Finally, you print you are percent s age years old and you are about percent s eight centimeter tall. So again. This is uh, probably here. No. Input. Okay. So this is the program, the same program that you present in the slide. So if we run it, 
How old are you? How tall are you? We digit uh, the, the number and then he prints the result. You are 29 years old and you are about uh, 180 centimeters tall. Uh, in this case, uh, we do not uh, check because we expect a string. So everything or input uh, translates automatically everything into a string. So if we put uh, trial we, or another in Luigi, we have a result, you are trials years old and you're about Luigi centimeter tall. Okay. More input. In this case, we want to decide, we decide that the result of raw input is not a string as default, but an integer. So a number without a comma, without points. So in this case, we call raw input with um, an argument how tall are you? This argument will be printed on the console and after the argument, we wait for the input from the user. It's the same result of this with the difference that we do everything with one function instead of two functions. The result of this row input is then converted in integer, if possible, and stored in the variable. For the name, we don't need this uh, conversion and we store the string into the name variable. Then we print, in this case, the type of eight and we see that is integer, int, and also the type of name and we see that is string. Finally, we print the same result. Here, hello has a open and close parentheses, but it's equivalent in Python 2.7 to have a method with open and close parentheses, or without parentheses. Command line parameter. Python scripts can receive a launch parameter. So you can receive input from user starting the program. Command line parameter are placed after the script name, so for example, script.pi, something, something else, something else again, separated by space. Could be any number, 1, 2, 11, 100, whatever. They are accessible through a module, we see after, which is a module, that is named sys, that is a Python module to handle system level operation. Receiving input from a command line is a system level operation. The variable is named argv that store this uh, uh, parameter. Argv store the, as first parameter the name of the script and all the parameter uh, needed and pass it. And argv is needed for handling such parameter, such common line parameter. An example. We import the sys module in this way. This line will, will see better in five minutes or so. This line import the argv variable from the sys module. This is one of the three way to import a module or a function from a module. In this way, we can use argv as a variable, as something that we define. We cannot, if we define another variable named argv, after that point we use the, our definition of argv, not the one imported from sys. So this line, I, I repeat, import the variable argv from the sys model. After 
he does uh, an operation that is called unpacking. We have one variable with uh, some number of argument or parameter from one up to whatever. And we, in reality, we know that we need uh, at least four parameters in this uh, program. So this line, Python in this line, take the first four parameter or arc v and put it in script, the name script, first the first parameter, second the second parameter, and third the third parameter. If we call the script with a wrong number of parameters, less than three parameters after the script, we have an exception. Value error need more than one value to unpack because it's not able to take this arg v and split its content in four different variables. Then it prints, uh, the script is called uh, script name, in this case parameters.pi. Your first variable is uh, one, your second variable is uh, two, and your third variable is three as a number, as not a string. Okay, parameter. If I run this script, I have an exception, an error. Because I need more than a way to unpack. By default, Eclipse runs the script without any arguments. So, argument one, two, three. And in this way, after passing three parameters, the, the result is that we call the script with three parameters, one, two, and three. Yeah. Okay. Function. We see a lot of function up to this point. Print is a function. Uh, print is a function. The raw input is a function. Type is a function. So. A function we formalize is the named sequence of statement that do a computation. We need to define a function before using it. The function definition is specific, specific is name, and all the operation it performs, and then we can call the function. Example, type conversion function, int 32 as a string, gives a 32 as a number, as an integer. String 3.24, etc. gives the same number represented as a string. Represented as a string is possible to see from this single quota at the beginning, at the end of the number. Example, math function. Math function are located in the math module like uh, argv was located in the sys module. In this way, we import mat. We don't write from mat import something, but we import mat. We define three variables, signal power 10.0, noise power 0.01, and the ratio between these two variables, and then we print a ratio, two points, the result of this operation. Decibel is 10 plus the logarithm of 10 of ratio. This log 10 is, called, is present in the math module, and it's evident from the fact that we write math dot something. In the previ previously, with argv, 
we don't write sys.argv because we import directly argv from sys. In this case, log 10 is not available here, but it, it's only accessible from mat, since we import mat here. If we need here only log 10, we can write from mat import log 10. And here we can use log 10, open parenthesis ratio, without this mat. Here we need this log 10 and this scene, so we import, we reference all the module. Then it prints decibel and calculate the uh, uh, scene function of a radiance and print uh, this, uh, this value. String function. Function that are applied at least as a string. Len gets the len, the length, the number of char characters of a string, okay? Lower put the string in lowercase, upper in uh, uppercase, and string, we see before, transform almost everything, try to transform almost everything in a string. So a number can be transformed in a string. Example. Course name, ambient intelligence, etc. The length of this this string is len, open parenthesis, course name. This give 20. We pass the string as an argument of the function len. Lower and upper function are different because they are functions that are strongly related to strings. Len, we can see it's possible to apply len to different data types, to string, to list, to dictionary. Lower and upper are applied only to string. So a difference here is that the function receive a parameter that is a string in this case. Here, the lower apply to the string contained in course. The result of this is ambient intelligence or small, or small cap and uh, upper ambient intelligence in upper. Then string, this function that transforms something in a string is applied to the variable pi that hosts the 3.14 number. This operation print the values pi is around 3.14 without string gives an error, because, because the concatenation is possible only between two strings. And pi here is a number, is a floating point number. So, again, pi equal 3.14, floating point number, not string print pi value is plus concatenation pi error. Cannot concatenate a string and a floating point number. If we do, if we convert pi in a string and we put a space after if, we obtain pi value is 3.14. Alternative way is to put a comma in the print function. In this way, the print function automatically convert, try to convert the object in a string to print it. The difference is that here, this is a statement of the print function, and here is a, a concatenation of a, a string. So in this case, we have print that try to operate on one argument, and in this other case, we have print that try to operate on two different arguments. So we try to convert all the argument in a string.
you can also define a new function, not only use a function already defined. A function is used to group portion of code which perform the same operation. For example, code for perform a well-defined operation. Calculate the area of a square. Calculate the number of people in a given room. Defining a new function enable code reuse. So same operation can be reused several times in the same script or in other scripts. New functions are defined using the keyword def in this way. Another example for computing the area of a disk given the radius. So we import again mat as a module and we define a function that we named circle area that accept an argument, it's called the radius. So we import what we need. Then we define a new function, circle area, with an argument that we call a radius, two points, indentation, and this function perform this operation. Radius elevated to two per mat.pi. Mat.pi is the number of it's the pi number defined in the mat module. This operation is returned by this function. Then the program start, really start. So the first operation of the program is print on screen, please insert the radius, and wait from an input from the user. When the user types something, the result of this row input is stored in radius. Then the function print the value typed by the user, and then print the result of the function circle area, passing the radius. So this function call perform this line of code. So print area, call this function, this function take this radius, pass here, go here, and return the final number that will be printed as a result. Function can be documented in Python with doc string that are optional for each function and are multi-line comment. Up to now, we see a single line statement or single line comments. We never see multiple line um, statement. In this way, the doc string can be a multiple line um, statement. It's a comment, the documentation of a single function, and is the when when present is the first thing that is present after the definition of the function. So in the previous case, circle area, the definition of the function, the doc string is compute the circle area given its radius. What the function does. A doc string starts and ends with three double quote or three single quote, always, and can be multi-line. So here I can put a new line and write, uh, open uh, the three quotes, uh, compute the circle area, new line, given its radius, uh, and close uh, all the three uh, single or multiple quotes. Modules. We see two modules up to now, math modules and the sys module. Modules are a logical way to organize code bigger than function, they, are, they, they include various functions, various variables that can be reused by other people, other person, other programs. Basically, are file consisting of Python code named as the module name. So a file named mat.pi contains a module named mat. 
Modules can define, uh, well, an implement function, variable, and so on. And we already met them, the math module and the sys module. Three ways to import them. The first is this one that we meet with the math module. In this way, we can use all the items present in the module. All the items mean all the function, all the variables, everything that that module uh, produce. So we can import the module and then we have to use, we can use everything that in this module. In this way, we call the PI variable from the math module that we explicit call it math.pi. Here we can define a PI variable that is something different from this because this is math.pi, and our pi will be our module, if, if we had one, dot pi. So two different things. In this second case, we import something specifically from a module. In this case, differently from before, we use directly the pi variable without the mat.pi, and if we here, before using this pi, write the pi equals something, a string, for example, here, this is not anymore this pi from mat, but this is our pi, because the local pi, the local variable definition, won over the module import, made in this way. So, this is the preferred way to import something because it not, does not redefine anything and you cannot overwrite anything. This is acceptable. This is bad. Import everything from a module because it imports all everything inside your program. So you cannot uh, if you want to use something defined here, you cannot call a function, a variable, anything in the same way. Otherwise, you overwrite this definition and you cannot use it anymore. So, best, acceptable, never. Forgot it. Before this, I move here. This is a web application, we can say it, called Online Python Tutor. That uh, it's useful to visualize what happens when you uh, digital program. So, for example, we define simply a variable, a string, and then we visualize the execution. Okay, it's a simple program, only one variable. It shows what happens in memory when you execute uh, this program, line by line. In this case, simply, it defines a, we can say two columns. In the first one, there is the variable name, that in this case is name, and the second line, the value of this variable, that is a string, and is, well, my name. If we edit code, and we add um, another variable, we can visualize step by step the execution. And we see that also for numbers, integer in this case, it's the same thing. In this global frame, let me say in memory, it's not totally correct, this representation, but it's uh, clear. Python put a variable name and its content on the right and a variable age in its content on the left. Simple, 
not difficult. We return here after when we speak about lists that are quite different from these. So if we, after we said that age is equal a name, and we visualize the execution, it's possible in Python. Name, it's similar to before. And then age is replaced, the 29 is replaced by a string. Okay? Nothing particularly different. Come back here. Playing with file. Obviously, Python allows you to read and write and clear files on disk with three operations. First of all, you have to open a file on disk for reading or writing them. Then you can read or write it with uh, almost three methods. Read, read all the content of the file from top to bottom. Read line, read one line at a time. And write, write one line of the content of, the of a new file. The last operation is to close the file so that uh, other program, other person can write or read from that. Example. Read a file taking its name from the command line. Again, from sys import argv, we unpack, uh, unpack the argv in uh, only two variables, script that is the script name, and file name that is uh, the, the name of the file. Open is the Python method to open a file name, a string that represents a, a, a file on disk with name and extension. In this case, uh, uh, we open Python zen.txt. Open the file, then print the file name with R, with the specify R, because we we don't know what is this. Probably it's a string, but it's okay to print with R. In fact, we see the single quote before the string name, because it effectively is a string. And then we print the content of the file. We read the content of this file open that we name txt, and we print at screen this file. This file is the Zen of Python that is obtained by writing uh, import this uh, in the console. If you type import this, uh, you see the Zen of Python. That is something that Dario show you, part of this show you on the first uh, lecture on uh, Python overview. I take this and I put it in a, in a file. So this read the file. After it performed the same operation again, uh, <clears throat> it print type the file name again, and with raw input, we wait for a new file name or possibly the same file name. If we write uh, again uh, python zen.txt, he performed the same operation. Open again the file, read again the txt, uh, sorry, store the, the pointer, the reference to the file, the result of this open operation to this variable, txt again, and then print txt again, uh, sorry, read txt again and show the result of the entire file. So let's try. Uh, this is named uh, read files. Read files, and the, the file is python zen.txt. So it prints, uh, here is your file, the name of the file, and then there is the, the zen of python. After, type the file name again, the raw input. I rewrite, uh, I don't remember, uh, Python Zen. And I reprint again the Zen of Python. Yeah. And the program stop.
So to recap, open to open a file, read to read all the content of the file. Read is a, a function that applied only to this item, this txt item, that is an item that is returned by the open function. function. And then close to close the file. For writing files, things are a little bit different. Here, we open the file with only passing only the file name. This is the default for reading file. If we write open file name, comma, R, we said that we open that file in a read-only mode. If we put a W, we would open this file in for writing hit. So, this other method, would, this other program import argv from sys, then unpack argv into variables, and print, we are going to erase the file name. Open the file in write mode, and call on the file this truncate function. The truncate function clear the file content on disk. Totally. Then the program asks for two lines from the user and store it in line the two variable, line one and line two. And after it writes the two line. Target.write, target is the file open. Target write, line one, write the first line. Then a new line is added. Then we write a second line, another you add, another new line is added. Print, we close it. And finally, target.close, close the file on disk. Next topic, conditional control flow. Uh, sorry, how many of you doesn't know anything about programming? Okay, so this is not... Uh, uh, This is a software for me and for you. Well, um, control flow gives the ability to choose about different outcomes. Hmm? Before um, speaking about control flow, we have to um, speak about comparators. Comparators are elements for comparing <coughs> items. In Python, there are six comparators, equal to, represented by equal equal, not equal to, from this symbol, less than minor, less than or equal to minor equal, greater than, et cetera, et cetera, greater than or equal to, mathematical symbol. A very difficult example. The result of a comparator is a Boolean, true or false. So if we print uh, two is equal to one, no, in fact, is false. If we print two is equal to two, yes, if the result is two. Ten is greater or equal to two, yes, and the result is two. Five is different from five, no, if the result is false. String. A string with content string is equal to a string with content string? Yes, it's true. You can compare numbers, integer and floating point, but also string in this way. And also you can compare variable. In this case, this variable hosts a number. So we can say this number, one, 123, is greater than 100? Yes. So it's, it prints true. Then we have Boolean operator. They are three, and in Python they are written this way, not, it's clear, or and end. They are evaluated in, the, in this way, 
not isolated first and isolated after not and or isolated last. So if you write something like that, like this, continue. something like this, this line, hand is evaluated before this or. So these two operations are evaluated before this. Boolean operator. True, it's equal to one, no, false. And true, so the result is false. False and true give false. True, it's equal to true, yes, true. Or true, the result is true. 10 is greater or equal to true, yes. And true is different from one, yes. When it's true and true, the result is true. Not true, it's false. 10 is greater than five, and 10 is equal to 10, yes. This is true, this is true, and the overall result is true. Or five is minor of true, false, but true and false give true. Not false and true, not false becomes true, and true and true, and so the result is again true. <laughs> Why we need uh, these? We need these for, uh, yeah. How does the expansion of the Boolean work? Sorry? The, the line before the last is minus four. Uh, we have um, these. First, this, okay. and, okay. and after the or, according to this uh, order. First, uh, not, so. first, and, second, and, third, or. Okay. To be clear, here it would be better to put some parentheses uh, to, to increase the, the readiness of the, the program. Yeah, but it's for, to appreciate the, the order. Why we need all this stuff? We need all this stuff for the conditional statement that is if. If executes some code only if a given expansion is true. So if something is true, then do something. In Python, sorry, the structure is if expression, two points, New line indented by four charter. So here we have an example. People are 20 people, 30 cats. If people and minor of cats print too many cats, the word is doomed. If people is major of cats, the word is saved. In this case, what's the, what of the print will be executed? The first one or the second one? When we stay here, up to response. It's not really difficult. 20 people is greater or minor or 30 cats? Oh, so the, what of these two prints? The first or the second print? The first or the second print? Oh, too many cases, the word is done, and we can go home. More if. We can try to improve this thing. We have one if and after another if. In this, the program is executed. 20 is put in the variable people, 30 is put in the variable cats, then this first evaluation, and Regarding the result of this evaluation, this other operation is performed. We, we can improve this example in this way, introducing elif and else. Elif is else if. It's four letter because else is four letter. The syntax is the same if expression two points, elif expression two points, else without expression two points. So if people is minor than cats, print too many cats. If he stop here, if this 
statement has been executed, the rest of the program is not uh, executed anymore in this way. Else, if people and are more than cats print, not many cats, the world is saved. If uh, else, the other case, in this case, the other case is that people is equal to cats, 20 people and 20 cats, for example, it prints, we can decide. This is named chained conditional. And is used to express more than two possibility. We have three possibility. Each condition is checked in order. The first that occurs, the program stop. And we can include if and else if and elif, sorry, inside other if and other elif. So we can write if people minor than cats, if something else, if something else, nested one inside another. Loops and list. A loop is an easy way to do a repetitive thing. A loop requires a condition to start and to stop. For example, for and while are two different types of loops. Lists are a sequence of value and is a data type for storing multiple items. Is what in other language we called array. Here they called list. To assign items to a list, you have to define a variable with the name of the list and in square bracket, all the items separated by a comma. Again, an example. We define three lists. Please pay, pay attention because this part for someone can be a little bit tricky. The list in particular, not the loop. Three lists, the count, one, two, three, four, five, a list of number, fruits, a list of word, a string, change, a list with number and string, mixed together. A four, a, a cycle, a, a four cycle that is four variable number in the count. It means for each element here in this variable, the count perform the following operation. The following operation here is one operation, this print, it could be multiple operation. The important thing is that it, this, the line are indented. Quindi, for numbering in the count, print, this is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as you see here. Then, you do the same thing, the same identical thing for fruits, that are a list of string. For variable, temporary variable, fruits, in the list fruits, print a fruit of type apple, orange, pears, etc. The same happens for the third list with mixing value. For E, a temporary variable, in change this list, print I got percent %R, why percent %R? Because we do not know what is this. This is a number, this is a string, and maybe after there is something else. So I print the raw representation, and we have, I got one, I got pennies, I got two, I got di dimes, I got three, and so on. So the structure of our for loop is four temporary variable that is valid and visible only after the four in collection, in this case, the list, and the line following the four are indented up to the end of the four. More four. We can also start with an empty list elements. This is the way of defining an empty list. And then for cycling, for adding elements in a list, we can use these four 
temporary variable in range 06. This range 06 create a list from 0 to 5. And in this way, similar to this, the count with a 0 before, in this way, you can loop six times and append um, the number to this list. Append is a function typical of the list that adds an element at the end of the list. Then we can cycle this list that is full with four E in the full list element was and we print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and stop. There is an alternative to this range, 0, 6, and is named x, x range. They, they works in the same way in Python 2.7 and something. The difference is that x range do not create the list with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but each time, it uh, evaluate and go on of a number up to the end. So it's a little bit more efficient X range respect to this list. List different from string are mutable, so they can be changed. Don't know it, they don't have a fixed length. We see that we had uh, we add uh, some uh, number to this, this list and are accessible by index. So if we have a list with A, B, C, we can add an element in the end, to the end of the list. We can add D. If we print this list, now we have A, B, C, D, because A, B, C is uh, the, the init of the list, and then we add D. But we can also access by index. We can say that print the first element, the zero index element, the first element of the list letters, and it prints the A, because the A is the first element. List can be evaluated with respect to length. A list, not only a string, can be a length. The length of this string is four. Then we can mutate the string, so we can replace the third value of the string with an IE. And then if we print the, the final result, the final list, we have A, B, C, E instead of D, because here we replace. In a string that is accessible by index in the same way, you cannot do this because the string is immutable. List concatenation, similar to string concatenation with the plus operator. We can take two string, A with a one, two, three, and B with four, five, and six, and we concatenate in C, A to B, and we obtain that C is a string, it's, sorry, it's a list with one, two, three, four, five, six as elements. List can be also slices. A slice is a way to, to access a portion of a list. A slice, happens with this operator. Square, some index, optionally, two points, another index, the hand index, close square bracket. Example, we have the list C with one, two, three, four, five, six. And we said that uh, we can slice the C list from one to three. And we store the result in D. So D right now is from one, zero, no, one, two, and then stop because three is here. So D is two and three. We can also slice without the first element. So we can say that E is C starting from the beginning up to, the th up to three, the third element. So in this case, E is one, two, and three, and F, with a full slice of the list C is a full copy of C. Okay? So starting index is optional, ending index is optional, so this is a full slice of the entire list. 
And this is a way to perform a full copy of a list. Slice works with strings, too. Uh, in the last clip, what's the difference between uh, using the uh, square brackets and the colon in the middle uh, and without it? For example, can we say a SQL key? We'll see. we we'll see now. It's a good question. Uh, slicing works also with string. You can slice a string and perform a copy of the string. The string are immutable, but in this way, you can perform a, a copy of a portion of a total of, of an entire str string. List function, append, add an element to the end, sort, sort the list from low to height, from A to Z, from zero to infinite, extend, append a new list to an existing list. It's another way to concatenate a string. String are mutable, so we can delete element from a string. There are several ways to do this. If we, know, if we know the index of the element, we can use the pop function. So pop one, remove the element at the index one, so the second element of the, string, of the list. Without providing an index pop, written in this way, delete the last element of the list. If you know the element to remove and not the index, you can remove, uh, we can use the remove uh, function. So list, uh, my list uh, dot remove, uh, uh, in this case, uh, five, remove the number five, not the, the index five, not the element at the index five. And to remove more than one element, there is the del function that has to be used with a slice index. So in this case, for example, del from my list, all the element from index five up to index seven included, eight is excluded. String and list are parents, are cousin. We can convert a string into a list of charter by using the method, the, the function list. So my list, new variable, is list, the, the, the function, the my string. It converts a string, my name, for example, in a list of a single charter. To break a string into separate word exists the function split. They take a sentence, separate by spaces, and for each word, it put each word in a... Um, item of the list, of a new list. Split, uh, divide the list uh, according to spaces uh, by default, but uh, you can uh, define uh, here in the parentheses the delimiter uh, according to uh, the split has to be done. So if you decide that the split has to be done not on the space but on the minus, you can write my string dot split minus here. The inverse function of split is join that take a list and create a new sentence, uh, sorry, a new string that represents a sentence. Here we are to the question. Copying list. Why we, I said that, uh, sorry, here, this slicing is a full copy of C. What happens here? I create a list of fruits uh, with uh, some fruits, uh, and I print this list. Uh, that is uh, apple, orange, pear, and apricot. Then I create uh, a new list, uh, a variable, my favorite fruits, uh, and I said that is equal to fruits, uh, these fruits. So if I print my favorite fruits now, I obtain apple, orange, pear, and apricot here. Exactly the same list. Now I add the fruit to the original list. Fruits dot append banana. I can, I do. I print the fruit list and effectively I see that the, the fruit list has apple, orange, pear, apricot and banana. But if I print the favorite fruits, 
I see that also the favorite fruits has a finally item that is banana. But I do not add these to my favorite fruits. Why this happen? Because with this operation, we do not make a copy of the list, but we only make a reference to it. This is a trust me version. Here, the, the do not trust me, but we see why. So remember, here we have in a table, we can say memory, name of the variable, content of the variable for each three variables. If we do this operation here, we found that age has this content. Now I create, a, no, really, um, a list that I know now count, one, two, three, and uh, my count. And I perform the same operation I did in the slide. Okay, visualize execution. So name, age equal, as before, age is renamed, uh, the, the content of name is copied in the content of age. Now let's see what happens with a list. With a list, we don't have here the content of the list. We have a, an arrow that go in another part, and he said that count following this arrow as one, two, and three at index zero, one, and two, the list I created. If I go back, uh, sorry, forward, and do the same assignment I do in the slide, creating my count, we see that also my count is an arrow that go there. So this is why if we add something to count, it's present also to the other list, because it's here that thing changes, not here, okay? So how to overcome this problem? Various methods exist. Slicing, a full slice is, is uh, one of these. Better, you can create a new list with the list method as before. So favorite fruits equal list the fruit. Or you can extend an empty list with the existing one. The favorite fruits, it's an empty list, dot extend fruits. Take all the content of fruits and put it in favorite fruit. Between these three, prefer this one. It's the most Pythonic, we can say. Let's try. Edit code. I said list of count. I go, okay, up to here, it's the same. A pointer to another portion in memory with one, two, three. What happens with list? We have a pointer, our narrow, but also the portion with one, two, and three are duplicated. So if I change count and, and I add four, it's add here and not here. So I preserve my copy. Last thing, quickly. Dictionary. Dictionary are another data type structure in uh, Python. They are similar to a list, but they are represented by a key that could be whatever you want, a string, a number, and a value. In a list, you have a key that is the index, that is an integer and stop, and a value that could be whatever you want. Here, you have a key that is whatever you want and a value that is whatever you want. Example, a dictionary with three pairs, key and value, is here, a dictionary named dict with a bracket, first key, first value, second key, 
Second value, third key, third value. They are also mutable, like list, so they can be changed after the creation. They suffer of the same problem for copying it, then list, assigning a dictionary to another dictionary, do not copy the dictionary, but only the reference. An example, uh, here a dictionary of uh, American state, United States uh, nation. I print all the, the states, and then I said, is Oregon available in my dictionary? Yeah, yes. How to check this? This operation, Oregon in states, is evaluated in a Boolean operation. I check if this key, Oregon, is available in this dictionary state. So it looks for the key and find that Oregon is a key of this dictionary, and so it returns true. Then we can add some more state as we did for the list. States of New York equal NY, state of Michigan equal its abbreviation. And then we can print New York abbreviation is states of New York NY, and Florida abbreviation is uh, state of Florida that takes this value that is FL. Maintain this state, this dictionary, all this dictionary, this part plus this part. We can cycle on this dictionary in various ways. This is one way for key and value, key state, key that I named here in this for loop state, and value that I named here in this for loop abrev in all the items contained in this dictionary, all the pairs key value in, the, in this dictionary, print state, the content of state of this state, is abbreviated the content on this abrev, that's it, it's here. So this print, Oregon is abbreviated OR, Florida is abbreviated FL, California is CA, and so on. New York is an N way. Then, I can get, uh, in this way, an element of the dictionary, but also by using the get method. The get method has an um, advantage over this method, since it can return something if the object, if the element is not present in the dictionary. In this case, Texas is not present here. So this state is equal to none, that is, in this case, unnecessary. We can close the parentheses here because none is the default return value. So this state get Texas return none. This is true because state is none, not none is true. So print, sorry, no Texas. But we can also, with this get, instead of using none, we can use another string. So in this way, with this get from Massachusetts, we can print Massachusetts is abbreviated, in this case, does not exist, instead of none. This value can be replaced with whatever you want. Dictionary function, len for the length, the number of pairs, key value, del to remove a single pair key value, clear to empty the entire dictionary, Keys and values so are similar to items. Items return the pairs key and value. Key returns all the keys and value returns only on the values. Last thing, really, getting help from Python. From the interactive shell, you have two utilities. One is help that present a help, as I said, uh, help utility. And you can type, for example, dictionaries and see all the properties and description of a dictionary. And, okay, uh, dir that show all the variable and function that you defined in your file, your model. In this way, in this 
at this time, I don't have uh, performed any operation, and so I see only the default uh, um, function and variable that is already defined by the Python interpreter. Some reference and link, and we stop here. We see on Monday at La Dispe, where we have the first uh, exercise on Python at four. And, and then we move uh, in 4D, where we speak about Git and uh, GitHub. Have a good night. <laughs>